Hello, my name is Ben Wilkoff and I am the Program Director for Blended and Personalized Learning in Aurora Public Schools. Many of you have seen videos where I take a look at uh, a screencast or something inside of a machine, um, but don't really look at the hardware itself um, because almost everything that I do or I encourage others to do is really web-based. Um, and so uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different today because I have a unique opportunity. Um, we are looking at touch-based Chromebooks as a resource for students and teachers, um, mostly because now they have the access to the Google Play Store, so the ability to run Android apps on a Chromebook is hugely compelling. And both of these different devices that we have demos of, this is the Samsung uh, Plus, uh, Samsung Chromebook Plus, and this is the Asus uh, C213. And both of these, um, because they were just released and literally every single one of the Chromebooks released in uh, 2017, which is the current year, uh, <laughs> will have the ability to use um, the Android uh, apps. And so just to give you a quick tour on both of these devices, I just wanted to look at them because I think there's something interesting uh, about both of them. Um, we do have a headphone jack on one side and then the charger is wonderfully a USB-C charger, which is becoming a universal standard. Pretty awesome to see that. There is a micro SD slot um, for additional uh, storage, um, sort of onboard storage. Uh, we have a volume rocker on this side, a power button, an additional USB-C 3 uh, charging port, so you're not locked into charging just on one side. Uh, you can do it on either side. And then there is this little indentation, and this is the sort of the star of the show here, and that is that there is a stylus to this device. And so you can use it to write, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, but if you open it up, it's really interesting. This device has sort of the very classic Samsung chiclet keyboard um, and similar styling, um, even since the very first uh, Samsung uh, Chromebook. And, but the screen is not really, uh, it doesn't really look like a wide screen. It actually looks more like a, a four by three, almost square. Um, but it does do what they call tablet mode. I don't know that it's truly tablet, um, but uh, it really is thin when you go this way. Obviously, you can have it that way where you're watching something or typing directly on glass, or you can do what they call tent mode and just tent it um, going that way. So that's kind of the, the device itself, the hardware, and sort of how that works. Um, and then you move over to the Asus, um, and the Asus is also a, um, a really new Chromebook device, um, but it's a different form factor. So we have our uh, very similar ports. Um, we have our um, charging and USB-C. Um, over here, we have our micro SD, and then on the other side, again, headphone jack, power button, volume rocker, and another USB. You can see the two speakers on either side of this one, whereas the um, uh, this device from Samsung doesn't have the stereo speakers coming out of either side. Um, this is a much more sort of widescreen format um, where you sort of, you still have the uh, chiclet keyboard. It's a little bit different than the Samsung um, uh, in terms of the, the way it feels, um, but it feels a lot more sort of, I don't know, laptop-like. Um, and so there is uh, really pretty interesting uh, internals as well. This is uh, Core M3 uh, from Intel. Um, I actually don't know what the uh, 
the internals on the processor is on this one, but really interesting, but it looks uh, very widescreen rather than this sort of square looking uh, interface here. And um, so the biggest and most important part about both of these devices is just the access to the Play Store, um, sort of out of the box. There are a number of uh, Chromebook types that are getting access, um, but out of the box, you should be able to open up and actually uh, get access to the Play Store. Uh, although this one, if I type in Play, it doesn't give me that access, whereas it should. We may have to do an update in order to get access to that, so I'm going to actually go in and see uh, if this is running. Yep, this is only running 53, Chrome 53. Um, so this needs to be updated. This one is already updated to uh, Chrome 55. So we're on 55.0.2882 on this one. And I'm just going to log in so you can kind of see what it looks like to have that Play Store up and running. So once this is updated, I'm going to, uh, obviously, once it's done trying to update, I'm going to update it. And then we'll be able to have access there. But you see on this one, potentially, um, is the access to the Play Store with all of our, um, uh, it says Google Play Store now on Chromebook. Do you agree to all of the terms? Obviously, I'm gonna be checking it out, so I do. And what's interesting is you do have to sign in yet again um, to make sure that you are sort of <laughs> binding your account uh, to the, the Chrome experience. So thinking about that they're really kind of separate and they've shoehorned them together a little bit. Um, and it does take a little while for that process to happen. Now, prior to getting access to these ones, I did have the previous Asus, and that was like one of the first ones that had access to the Android uh, apps and the Google Play Store, and that was the Flip 11. This is the Flip C213, I think is what they're calling it. And so, um, you know, just thinking about all of them going forward will have access to these Android apps, um, but you do have to go through an extra process. And because we are in a school district, obviously we will want to use our... Um, our Google Apps uh, or G Suite domain, domain in order to log in and gain access to these opportunities, but it does have to be turned on. The ability to use the Play Store has to be turned on, and you can do that by organizational unit. Um, and so it, it definitely makes sense to sort of come up with the policies and the way in which you want to roll out the Play Store. And it looks like it may have finished uh, doing that process. And now it's going to ask me one more time to accept everything uh, that we need. And man, access to the entire uh, Google Play Store is going to be a huge, huge asset. Um, if we go on to obviously some recommendations or if we're looking at our own educational side of things, um, you know, it's not necessarily curated out of the box. So we're going to have to do some extra curation um, to, to make sure this works um, and allow for that to happen. But one thing that you could never do on Chromebooks before, but that now is possible, and I'm just going to type on this screen here, is you can use uh, really robust apps um, uh, that, that essentially require onboard uh, app storage. And so I'm going to load up something that's very intensive like Minecraft Pocket Edition, where you'd be able to do um, some programming challenges and all kinds of different things. And I'm able to, it says that my device is capable of running this. Now this is going to be the first big test um, for whether or not this particular device uh, can handle something like Minecraft Pocket Edition that is, is pretty intensive in terms of rendering all of the different things that are going on on the screen. I'm going to load up on this one too to see how this one fares. Um, but there's a lot of value in sort of putting it through its paces and seeing what happens. Um, I'm also going to load up a few things. And you see me kind of typing away at... Uh, the screen, which I like a lot. There's a, 
a lot of value in, in kind of typing this out. One of the apps that we are looking at is Seesaw, and this screen is is really beautiful. Um, it, it's just kind of amazing to to see how how good um, how good these are. And funnily enough, look at that. So Seesaw, which is definitely something that we're looking at. Uh, so this is Seesaw, the learning journal. It says your device isn't compatible with this version. So clearly app developers are having to, at the very least, um, look at their compatibility with uh, Chromebooks and see maybe there's something that they have to set up on their end in order to make it, make it work. However, I did just get a notification saying that um, my, uh, my app, Minecraft, has been downloaded, um, but in checking that, uh, actually in checking that, uh, the update or notification, it did crash Chrome. And so there are some things about this that it is, is really um, uh, not quite, it hasn't quite figured it all out. Um, and so it's, it's very interesting to, to see how things are, are progressing. Uh, I'm gonna try and open up the Minecraft Pocket Edition on uh, this machine, and it looks like there are a couple more settings over here that I'm gonna need to set up in order to make it work with the Google Play. And so, wow, look at that. So I have access to everything uh, that I might need to. We can go, let's try and go full screen with that. Oh, some weird issues there in trying to go all the way up to, to a full screen there. So we're gonna create a new world and see how long that takes to go all the way through. Yep, definitely not quite registering that this is the whole space there. It thinks that it's sort of one size and it's not expanding out to meet the needs of the whole screen there. Very interesting to see how that's all sort of working um, and clearly uh, an important consideration, you know, what are the apps that you have chosen? Do they work with this new setup of uh, kind of combined Chromebook and Android experience? So this is a very first look. The only other thing that I wanted to, to show you is uh, what happens when you take the, the stylus out. So I just took the stylus out of the Samsung uh, Plus Samsung Chromebook Plus. And what immediately happens, what immediately happens when you take this out is uh, it defaults to a stylus tool um, and it shows up as, uh, you know, capture the re region, capture the screen. Um, I'm going to put it back in just so you can see that again. Um, so when I undo this, it's a very satisfying clicking sound. Um, I'm going to capture, let's just capture the screen. One thing that I have noticed that is really interesting is you can get it close but not touching and it does register as either a touch or that you're trying to hover over it. Um, and so you can actually get access to this anytime by pressing the little um, stylus button. And if I capture the screen and then it gives me the opportunity to annotate it inside of Google Keep. So this is an experience where I do get to annotate that particular screenshot um, and they're using one of the Google apps uh, in order to be able to do that. So I can, you know, draw directly on it and I'm going to just open this up and make this the um, make it red, make it really nice and big. It is pretty responsive, but one thing that I have noticed is very interestingly, it's all connected, which I I'm like finding super bizarre. There has to be a way to make it, um, you know, not connected. Um, and so I'm going to clear the page and we'll try again over here. But it's very interesting that the entire time this stylus is connecting throughout. And so I'm not really sure why it's doing that or why it is that we would want that as a feature. Um, but I'm annotating it here and uh, it's not really coming across. So anyway, that's very, very early days. This is a, um, 
again, a demo model that we had access to in order to sort of support our greater learning and understanding what these devices look like. Um, I think retail, both of them are somewhere in the 450 range, um, but as school districts, I do believe that there is uh, greater capacity for working on um, you know, bulk pricing and other opportunities for uh, supporting kids with these devices and teachers with these devices um, at a lower point, price point because I think there's some value in figuring out what uh, the next iteration of Chromebooks should be and what touch-based Chromebooks can do that, you know, our current crop of Chromebooks can't. And thinking about, um, you know, is this experience robust enough? Is the ecosystem robust enough to really uh, create different opportunities than what you can do, um, you know, just with a traditional Chromebook that you can get under $200? Because um, you're not going to get those uh, prices, even if you uh, work with a vendor um, for, for touch-based Chromebooks, at least, at least not yet. So really cool opportunities. Um, both of them, you know, do these great... Uh, you know, tablet modes and 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 do provide for a level of uh, of access to touch based experiences um, that you didn't have previously. So I encourage you to to check them out. And thanks so much for watching.